Imagine your grandpa telling you that his club back in the day used to win English championships for fun and also won three FA Cup trophies, but you don't even know that club. Well, that might just be Sheffield Wednesday, because this is a team that had actually won those titles in England previously, and now it is not looking good at all. We are looking at a team that is currently in a 23rd position in the championship, possibly looking to go down into League One. That clearly isn't good enough for a club with that much history. It's a club established in 1867. That surely has to mean something, and today it does. It's time to bring back Sheffield Wednesday to glory. To start things off, let's take a look into the squad. Beetle is the highest potential player in the team, but he is only loaned in. So we will have to let this man go at some point. Then up next, the second highest potential player in the team is Gassama. But he doesn't have a freaking picture. Then up next, it is Bernard who comes in with 77 potential. That is the number three on the list. And he is 22 years old from Jamaica. By the way, if anyone has ever been to Jamaica, please let me know. Is it a beautiful place? I was in Cuba already. Beautiful spot. Jamaica, I have no idea. Of. Let me know. But this Sheffield side clearly is struggling right now. But previously, if you take a look at what has happened there, you can actually see, historically speaking, over the past like 12 years, 13 years, they were in the championship for a while. They got into that fourth position in 1617. And obviously, people were hoping to get back up into the Premier League at that point. But ever since that has failed, you can see that the team has been on a trajectory downwards. Now, I believe last season, if I'm not mistaken, they got promoted back into the championship in an insane way. I still remember people on Twitter talking about it. And that is probably that season right there. Third position in 22-23. So they got promoted in the championship, but they could instantly yo-yo back down into the championship again. And that's something that we definitely do not want with this team. So let's make sure that we actually go ahead and spend the money right in the first transfer window. It's going to be very important. We only have 5 million to spend, but clearly a big enough squad to make a couple of sales and the most expensive player is Bernard, but he ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be focusing on the older players. Even though this man has a very tempting name, I will have to let him go. Let's be real. Let's see how this works out in the first transfer window. Before we sign anyone, though, take a look at this youth academy talent that was already there and waiting. DDA from the Ivory Coast. Bangura. He is a 15-year-old winger who could straight away make his way into our team. But most importantly, at Johnny Sports on Instagram. That's where you need to follow. Because once again in my story, I ask you guys which players to sign for this specific rebuild with Sheffield Wednesday. And everyone has come in clutch. And a couple of those messages that you've seen right here will decide which players make it into this team. To start things off, we're going straight to the fans and what they're saying. And Olivier has said that I should buy, buy this man. It's a Belgian left wing and his name is Mika Godz or Hods or however you pronounce his name. He is supposed to be the one that I'm buying. It's a left winger who is a very talented player. I've heard his name before. It's not like he's completely new to me, but... He is at Ajax, and we all know Ajax brings through some incredible young players. And now he is belonging to Sheffield. It wasn't the position that was necessary to be upgraded, to be honest with you. But I was excited as soon as I saw the name, and I was like, oh yes, I didn't use him yet. Technical and flair on him. Left winger, 18 years old, 5 foot 9 tall from Belgium. And the formation that we're going to be playing is going to be the 4-3-3 attack. I want this team to win games by offense, not defense. My friend Morozos has suggested this one. Konstant Pelias is a very, very talented Greek player from Park, who now makes his way into Sheffield Wednesday for 4.5 million, which I believe to be an amazing price. And it is. Let's go. Negotiated that one really well. He goes straight into the camp position, comes in with a 73 rating. Decent amounts of pace, good shooting, great passing, even better dribbling, five-star weak foot, four-star skill moves, technical play style. Basically, 
This guy is the perfect signing for a club like Sheffield. He could easily level up this squad and then be sold for millions upon millions later on. So once again, shout out to Morozos for that one. That's a good suggestion, buddy. Shout out to Bob Heinen for the suggestion of Ukili from Arkasi Valvaik. He is the star player in that team, he says. And now Yasin Ukili is going to be joining us. He's a Moroccan midfielder that I probably would have never bought. And that's why I absolutely love the involvement of you guys through Instagram because I said in that video, in that story, I need players that ideally I haven't heard of that I can turn into legends. And this is a very, very good one. Don't get me wrong. A Belgian left winger is an amazing talent, but these are the types of players that excite me the most when I bring them into the team. The ones I've never used before. And he doesn't have any play styles. He's very, very physical with his game, it seems. 22 years old, six foot five. Okay, buddy. That is going to be a monster in that midfield. And he comes in at a 68 rating, which is pretty much perfect for this team. And he didn't cost me too much either. I am madly excited to welcome this new goalkeeper into our game. The people from Down Under probably know him. This is Paulzin. Alex Paulzin coming in from Wellington Phoenix. This is a lovely signing for our squad as it is exactly the type of player I want for this rebuild. I have let go of the goalkeeper. Paulzin comes in. He stands six foot tall. Not that tall, but he is from New Zealand. Saying Down Under... I mean, obviously, people say that for Australia, but is it okay to say it for, like, New Zealand as well? I guess not, right? But anyways, New Zealand's goalkeeper is now here, 21 years of age, and now he's a prospect within our squad. Great haircut in the picture. Not that great in-game. Do better, yay. The US also has a couple of very exciting talents, and Buck is one of them. He plays at New England, and I've also already seen many rumors linking him towards the European side of the game. And now he is going to be joining us as a center midfielder because Hendrik, I'm sorry, pal, you're only loaned into the squad. Can I get to him, bro, please? Thank you. Buck is here, by the way. That thing where it, you try to get one to one player, but it never gets there. There has to be some sort of like short or can't talk about this that has like millions of views. Surely everyone experiences that and loses their mind. Anyways, Buck is here, left footed. Okay. Ukli is right with it, so let's swap positions. I'm surprised that I actually managed to get across there. But he has extremely well-rounded stats, as you can tell right here. High attacking work rate, 5 foot 11 tall. And I actually saw him play last season when he was 17 years old. And he was starting to get playtime for New England. And I always thought, that guy looks kind of special. And now he's a part of our team and the last transfer of this season. The first season is done and I guess we have achieved exactly what the Sheffield Wednesday fans would love to see at the end of this year. Not getting relegated. 49 points, 5 points off of Ipswich who are getting relegated. So we did survive in the championship and the downward trajectory hopefully stops from this point on. Next season, we need to push as close into the top 10 as we possibly can. But for now, we're going to focus on our players. Now, when I say our players, a couple of these guys, like Ogbo, like Pedersen, are only loaned in still. So we need to make a couple of changes later on. But Musaba, who was initially 66 rated, I turned him into a right wing. Let go of Pineda, I believe the guy's name was, in the right wing position. He was also only loaned in. He's gone up to a 72. So uh, got up to a 70 there. Noel, Noel Buck up to a 68. <laughs> Ukli up to a 70. Ukili, sorry. And then you have the exciting prospect of the team, Constantelias on a 77. And by the way, this Bernard is apparently a former Manchester United talent. He has come in from the under-21s of Manchester United, which is interesting enough. And then Paulsen up to a 72. Now, we need to take a look into the performances of these players to see who is doing well. And it is Ike Ogbo who is going to be leaving the squad, which is fine. We're going to find someone new for that position. Constantelias with 14 goal contributions. Musaba with 13. Gots coming up with 9. Okili with 6 and 2. It has been a decent enough season, but there's still a ton of work to do. So let's keep it going. Now, this is one I'm very excited about. It is Augustin Roberto, River Plate's next big striking talent. 
and EA has instantly recognized that and given him a decent amount of potential. This guy is six foot one. His name is Roberto, and now he is our new striker. River Plate, as you guys know, one of the most prestigious clubs in Argentina, alongside the likes of Boca Juniors. The rivalry is obviously insane, but now he comes in to take over that striking position. 75 pace, 69 shooting, 67 physicality. Not that much of a skiller, not that great with his weak foot yet, but he also has no play style. So he will come in now and take over this team. And who knows? Maybe he's the one. Maybe he isn't. Hopefully it all works out for our team as we make more purchases. And we are given a budget of 13 million for this one, by the way. So I can still buy a couple. Another signing suggested by you guys. It's a suggestion from E-Boy who says that I should go for... Brody Spencer, who apparently has been picked up by Ajax in our career mode, which is a good sign. Initially, he plays for Huddersfield, another lost giant of English football, but Spencer comes in at a 68 rating, six foot tall. And with that signing, we now have a left back after the initial left back has already left uh, of, because he was on loan. Now we need to find a right back for this team where Valentin is in. Ideally, if I can, someone around the 70 rating. 68 is the bare minimum that I want to bring into this squad right now. I think everyone knows Desiree Doué, an incredible talent that currently plays in Liga, the same team as his brother. And his brother is a right back, and he is going to be joining us. Guela Doué is joining us here. Stade René seems to have two of those players in there and we're gonna pick up one and he comes in at a 70 which is amazing because i initially thought he was gonna be a 69 or something but that is perfect any play styles nothing but he's 21 years old he's six for two from the ivory coast pretty much the perfect player for this team and after making these signings i don't have any more money so let's move. Things have gotten better, but not good enough. 15th this season with 62 points. But I'm telling you right now, next season, we're going to be up there. We're going to make it at least into the playoffs because the playoffs is on 73 points. And we got to 62 this season. Minus one on the goal difference, showcasing that we are not good enough yet. But the team truly looks great. Musaba 77, Guts on a 75, Roberto 74, Constantelias 81 rated, Ukili 74, buck up to a 72. The defense needs strengthening in that left center back spot in the next season. The other lads that have come in have seemingly grown nicely and our goalkeeper is up to a 77. In gameplay, it's going to be interesting to have a six foot tall goalkeeper. That is very short. I personally like having those six foot four, six foot five type of goalkeepers in there. But yeah, it is what it is. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. We see Roberto, first season in the team, 15 goals, three assists. Great work. Musaba with 12 and 12 and a plus five in growth this season. That surely will keep going as he brings in another amazing season there. Dots with 13 goal contributions, players off the bench doing really well for us. And Okili coming in with a great performance once again from that center midfield spot. And Constantelias with 11 assists, nearly the one with the most assists in the team. But 15th is not good enough. We need to make one or two more signings to go ahead and secure promotion. It's time to scout in South America once again. That man right there is named Alan Saldivia. And first of all, amazing name. I love it. But he comes in into our team as a 5'11 tall center back. Yes, Pamevo, I'm sorry. It's time for someone new. And wow, 80 pace on him. Okay, if you're short, then you should at least be quite quick. By the way, in terms of short, I don't mean to say like 5'11 is short, but for a center back, it's not exactly tall. So he comes in with 80 pace, 73 defending, 81 physicality, and he has the aerial play style. For someone that is on the shorter side, that is very impressive and very useful. So with that signing now being made, I feel like I could upgrade somewhere else. Ukili, 74 rated. Buck, 72 rated. But he's still very young. I, I don't 
don't know, but I feel like he's not going to grow that much. So maybe I can use my budget plus him to bring in a top target into the team. Alexander Pras is the one to come into that center midfield position and change things. I feel like this was the ideal solution. He's a very talented player that currently in the Austrian Bundesliga is doing amazing for Sturm Graz. Not just this season, but I believe last season as well. And I've already heard his name linked to many Bundesliga squads in Germany. And he comes in with a 79 rating. Look at that. He probably could be even playing in that camp position, which he can. But so well balanced. I absolutely love players that are so well balanced in midfield. Finesse shot, incisive pass, technical and flair on him as well. Left footed, 24 years old. Yeah, this was the perfect signing. It had to be done. Bukili, I'm sorry. Are we upgraded? May 2026. Now the question is, has this team gotten into promotion spots? Yes, it has. It has gotten to the top spot. 92 points on Sheffield Wednesday. By the way, if at any point in this video, out of habit, I say Sheffield United, I'm sorry. I really hope I haven't done it yet. If I have done that mistake, I'm sorry. But... Just be happy with the fact that Sheffield United is in that sixth position right now and they're going to have to fight for promotion as Sheffield Wednesday is going up into the Premier League directly through the championship. Now, what has made that happen? It is this team right here. It is a ridiculous team. That's the signing that we have made has gone up to an 83. Constant Elias has been growing insanely consistent and the rest of the team has been basically pulling themselves through and catching up to the rest of the squad, which is good. Musaba on an 83 at this stage defensively, lowest rating is a 78 as we do go up into the Premier League and the next season all these players should be above 80, which hopefully puts us into a decent spot to not finish at the bottom and get relegated. So this team is fire and with premier league money we should be able to actually make some significant changes if we want to and augustine roberto 29 goals zero assists seems like he doesn't care about any of his teammates it's fine he's a lone striker up top and he needs to score the goals almost saba coming in with 34 goal contributions at no point when I jumped into this rebuild, did I think that Anthony Musaba would turn out to be the beast that he is right now? But it has worked out. And Constantelias with 18 assists, having a lot of fun in the championship. Now, Premier League football is going to be different. It's going to be difficult. It is time for an upgrade in that midfield and to drop someone into the bench or onto the bench, I should say. They shouldn't drop into the bench. But Christian Aslani, the Inter talent, is going to be joining us for 45 million. Fuck. Nothing against you, pal, but I do need that upgrade. We need to survive in the Premier League and maybe even do better than that. And this is yet another player that is extremely well balanced. Pras beats him in every single category and is only one rating above him, which shocks me, to be honest, because he has 14 more pace, plus four more shooting, more passing, more dribbling. How is that only a plus one difference? Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, make some more signings if we can. I was given a budget of around 80, 85 million, I believe. And this one already cost me a lot, but it is necessary. Because as you guys always tell me in the comments, we do need to have a decent bench. And that's what we're starting to build with Buck being dropped down now. Time to bring in a bunch of backups. This is us, an Argentinian center attack midfielder. Vicente Taborda is going to be joining us for 17 million. His price rating is unnecessary to show. He will come in instead of Baconson onto the bench with a 78 rating. Same as Buck. He does have some good stats on him, by the way. Incisive pass as well. That's a good signing, lads. In walks a backup centre-back, who is someone that a lot of people might be talking about in the near future. This is Querfeld. And he plays for Rapid Wien. Seemingly, by Leverkusen has picked him up. And as you can tell, that's a very odd number because I paid my entire budget on this transfer to come into our squad. 77 rated. Not that much pace, but great defending and physicality on this young man. Comes in at the age of 22, six foot three tall. Austria's best young centre-back possibly. So let's see how his career goes, especially here at our club. The season has come to an end and Sheffield Wednesday is in the 10th position with 56 points as we speak. A negative goal difference clearly showcases that we are not at that top level yet. At the top level is Manchester City. 
and Manchester City is our opponent in the FA Cup final. Let's let's see what our team can do. We will see their ratings. We'll see everything. In the pre-match report it brought in the likes of Valverde. Echeverri is now playing for them as well. Kunde, Upamecano, Howard, Howard Bellish, and Nuno Mensch. Interesting revamp of the defense for sure. Here it goes. Can this team win it? Look at our team. It's a beast of a squad, by the way. Let's take that away. Look at that team. It's a very good one. I'm proud of it. I really am. Sheffield, can you do it? On pens, we lose it. Pras misses Musaba and Taborda as well. That is not good enough. In the end, it goes Manchester City's way. GG's, man. It, it went 4-4 in regular and extra time. That is insane. We had a good game there. A good battle against the best team in the league. Showcasing again that our team is progressing. It is getting better and better as we speak. And right now, 88 on Musaba, 89 on Constantelias. You could argue those guys are world class already. Up next is Roberto, then it's Pras, and then it's many others chasing down those stats. Paulsen up to an 86. Let's go. And the bench is not looking too bad either. I definitely need to bring in a backup striker for the next season and another backup fullback if I can. But generally, this team has done well and has surprised me by getting into that final. Roberto, 22 in one in his Premier League season. I like that. Gotts stepping up there, 11 and five. We have Musaba on 10 and 2, Aslani with 12 assists, Constantelias with 12 assists. Midfield is doing their job, so hopefully next season we can push into a European spot. There he is, our new backup striker for the upcoming season. It is a former Chelsea player, David Tatro Fofana is joining us. Right now he seems to be playing for Brighton, not anymore. He comes in for Kadamarteri. He takes over with an 82 rating, which is going to be good. He's still young. He's still wanting to prove himself, which is exactly what we're looking for now to find a fullback. And the next man coming in is that fullback. It is a free agent. And you know what? I want to know from you guys down below, should the next video be based on buying free agents only? Let me know in the comments if you would be up for that. I love those videos, so I'm fully open to that opportunity. But this is a left back coming into our squad. Montero is his name, and he is from Portugal. 18 years old, could possibly be Rafa Guerrero's regen. But then again, I think Rafa Guerrero, is he that old already to have a regen? Probably not. But at least we do have a great backup now for the fullback position. The season is done once again. And again, Sheffield Wednesday is in the FA Cup final. This time against Aston Villa. Surely this time it works out. Because look at the squad. Roberto 92, Musaba 90, Constantelias 92. This is a team that should be playing Champions League football. That's all it is. So you better win this against Aston Villa, lads. Come on now. 3-1. Constantelias, Roberto, and again, Constantelias steps up. 3-1 it is. That suggestion through the Instagram post has been a huge one. Now, the question is, what happened in other competitions? Winning the FA Cup is huge. I love that. But in the Premier League, top four. There you go. Chelsea winning the Premier League title. United and City very close, and we were only four points off. 36 on the goal difference that's we did better than anyone else in the league that is a great sign for what's to come in the upcoming season again the stats the 86 rating of saldivia is the lowest we have right now this team has worked its way up and it has deserved it and augustin roberto with 50 goal contributions in 50 games when you play in the highest division in England, is nuts to me. Musaba with 17 and 8. Gods has done well. Constantelias with 15 assists. He did have a great season. And yeah, now we're going to go into Champions League football. And I got to say, I expect this team to win the Prem or get into the Champions League final because I'm already seeing these guys growing in the next season as well. Even if it's staying the same, they should be capable of competing. So. Exciting season coming up. Got passed by Leverkusen and now smacking up AS Roma. Is this team going to be able to pull it off against PSG in a semi-final? The first time it works out and the second time it does as well. Now, the big question is, 
what is happening. What is happening in the league? We beat Arsenal, we beat Spurs and Manchester City back to back. Is our team now at the top of the Premier League up against AS Monaco in the final? Let's go. I love that. That's a different opponent that I did not expect. Are you guys the same? Are you excited as well when you come up against an opponent that you did not expect there? I definitely am. And Monaco is going to be an interesting one to look into. But, mate, look at this squad. Look at this team. It is ridiculous. It is truly unbelievable. And we do have an original in there with Bernard. Anyone else? I don't think we do have anyone else in terms of an original in this squad. So, as things stand... It's looking great. It's looking very good. The bench is solid. The starting 11 is solid. It's world class. And stats wise, Roberto, yes. Mosaba, Constantelias. Yeah, dude, this is the season. It just is. The stats on these players look ridiculous. And now the Premier League. Let's see. Have they pulled it off? Is there a chance for a massive double? Yes, let's go. We did it. Sheffield Wednesday at the top of English football again. The return to glory is completed in that sense. But that Champions League final is still yet to be played. Now, the question is, who does AS Monaco have to get to this spot? Matisse Tell returned to France. Deal has joined them. Very talented player from Köln. Vlasic is in there. Jeremy Pino. Dominguez. Ruben Neves, and you have Zakarian, okay, Jalo, Diomande, Christens, and Vemiro. A very, very interesting squad, and a 3 4 2 1, as far as I can remember, is a formation I do tend to struggle against. So let's make sure we put out our best performance. As we get prepared for this game, let's just quickly talk about the fact that Germany now has beaten Netherlands as well after beating France. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but we're winning the Euros. That's all I'm going to say. At the same time, Turkey got smacked 6-1, which was uh, a bit sad to see, especially thinking that maybe this is the generation that could do well and get something done for, uh, for our people. But that clearly hasn't worked out. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Let me know if your nation has done well or your nations, because obviously people can have two backgrounds like me as well. But yeah, Germany looking fire right now. Oh, Matisse Tell. Okay, Matisse Tell. I see you. We got to pay attention to him. He's going to be one that could get past us very easily. Yes. Away. Let's go. Beautiful tackle to get us moving. Roberto. Musaba. There goes our right back. And he gets tackled to the ground. Musaba will keep this going. Lob into the middle. Roberto with the header. Shoot, save. Keeper smashes his head against the post. Constantilias is cross. Roberto not getting there. Oh no, Dwayne is injured. Oh no, Dwayne is not injured. <laughs> what the hell, bro? How do you pull that off when you're injured? That makes no sense. I love these long shots. These long shot power shots are ridiculous. They just turn out to be... The most fun thing to do on this game. And when it works out like that, Keeper has no chance. Due, even if you have to get subbed off, it's okay. You scored a banger, pal. Nice steal. Nika Hot running down that left. Is it Hot? Is it Gods? What is it? There are like three languages that they speak over there. Oh, go on. No. That should have worked out. Matis Tell. Nice movement, bro. Saldivia is amazing. Roberto. Across to the right, Musaba. I see the movement. Roberto still going strong. Roberto cuts in. Keeps going. Shoots on his left. Not accurate enough, bro. Tell is causing me some trouble. Matisse Tell. Running down the wing. We got it. All good. Inside to Pras. Who is part of the build up so far. Musaba. Lovely move. Even better pass. Into Pras, he sees his teammate, and there we go. I think it might be an own goal in the end, but do we care? No, we don't. Mika steps up right there. No, it's Constantelias. Let's go, buddy. The Greek god has done it for us. 2-0 up against our opponents. Sheffield Wednesday on fire. Beautiful build up. And did he actually get a touch in? Yes, he did. Step up. Oh, no, Bernard. This is the slide tackle. Beautiful pass goal offside it is offside it's all good no worries Saba win that 
Yes, he does. Dodds, can you win that too? Yes, we can. Constantelias into Roberto. Roberto, beautiful. Keep going, pal. Score your goal. You deserve it. He's such a good striker. I can't get a goal with him there, though. This Champions League trophy belongs to Sheffield Wednesday. What an incredible team. Honestly, from defense into attack, everyone was amazing. And the man to lift the trophy is an original. Bernard, the captain, the center back, is going to lift it up. Formerly Manchester United. And now at Sheffield, he manages to pick up that beautiful trophy. Guys, this was a blast to record. And I hope you had fun watching this. Roberto, I'm sorry I couldn't get you to score. Maybe in another rebuild. Have a good day, guys. Take care and peace.